Hey guys, Sam Terrell with the Northwest Aeronaut, and today we're going to talk about the differences. Turn that down for a second. We're going to talk about the differences between a normal landing technique and a short field landing technique. Most To most people, a short field landing is simply one in which you hit a spot and you either simulate or actually do max braking. Uh, and while that is a requirement of the ACS, there's more to the technique of doing a short field landing than just simply hitting a smaller spot and using more brakes than normal. It's about airspeed control and it's about controlling your uh, path down to your spot, which is a little bit more direct at a slower airspeed, it's going to be less float because we're trying to approach the runway in a way that is at a, uh, so a reduced airspeed from what we're used to, and it's going to have minimal float. So we're kind of coming down just straight onto our spot. So we're going to go out, we're going to demo a normal landing, see what that kind of looks like and hitting a spot, and then show what the short field technique looks like and hitting our spot. All right, we're going to clear the area. We're going to get going. Fox traffic, 65 Kilo Delta is departing 02, left close traffic, Fox. All right, lights, camera, action. Everything's looking good. Fox traffic, back 9244 is. All right, we got our runway 02. Uh, 02 got the center line, bringing that power in. We're at miles per hour today, folks, so we're going to be rotating at 60 miles per hour. We've got our abort point identified. Airspeed's alive. Everything's in the green. There's 60. Rotate. Woo! Come right off the ground. There's our abort point, and we are continuing. Climbing out. VY. About 85 here. Looks like we can actually trim down just a little bit. Beautiful. June day here in Oregon. Traffic, five two Fox, traffic train final, zero two. For both of our landings today, folks, we're gonna be using the beginning of the second strike as our touchdown point. Now, for the normal landing, for private candidates, we have 400 feet beyond that point to set it down. And zero, minus zero. For the commercial candidates, the normal landing is 200 feet, which is the same as the short field landing for private candidates. All right, gas is on, undercarriage is fixed, mixtures rich, props and pumps we don't have, switches are on, seatbelts are on, pre-landing checklist complete. So we're starting with our normal landing and we're gonna use a normal approach speed. And again, being in miles per hour, we're gonna keep our Skyhawk here at about 70 miles an hour for our normal landing. All right, begin our descent. Power's coming back, bringing those first 10 degrees of flaps down. So we're going to be holding about 70 on a final approach, and we're going to be aiming for the numbers. And usually with that, we should be able to round out over the numbers and have enough float to get us to that second strike. All right, we're going to put 20 degrees of flaps in here. Looking for 80 miles an hour here on base, and then 70 on final. Got a lot of thermals this time of year. Can make approaching a runway a little challenging, especially here at Twin Oaks. Not to mention hitting a spot, because the planes really like to just stay up in the air. Twin Oaks traffic, 6 like Kilo Delta's final, 0 2 Twin Oaks. All right, so we're using 30 degrees of flaps here on final which is not full flaps. Full flaps in this plane is 40. And I'm holding 70 here on final approach, coming down to number to the number two on the runway. And we're looking to set down on that second stripe. So we're gonna have about 400, three to 400 feet of space to bleed off our energy and set it down on the runway. A little slow, adding a little power. Got some thermals. All right, here we come in over the number two. And we're just bringing that power out and we're kind of flying it to that second stripe. Letting it set down nice and gently. All right, and we'll go ahead and bring it to a stop. So that was our normal landing. Aiming for the number two on the runway, bleeding off that airspeed and letting it kind of float down to the second stripe. 
Toronto traffic, 6 out of Delta, clear 02, taxiing 02 trunks. So now we're going to do the short field technique. And just for the heck of it, we'll do a short field takeoff as well. But the big difference here with the short field technique is we're going to be, first of all, staying a little bit high because the short field technique is supposed to simulate coming in over an obstacle. So you don't want to have an approach uh, course or a glide path. Four, four, eight, you headed to Twin Oaks. A glide path that's too low. Now the other thing is we're going to be holding an airspeed that's a little slower. Ultimately, we're going to be holding 70 on final, but then on short final, we're going to kind of bring it down to 65 miles per hour. And again, if you're in knots, basically just subtract 10 from all of these numbers. So 50, uh, 65 miles per hour, and we're going to be using full flaps, 40 degrees of flaps. And for any of you out there who fly Cessnas, you should know that with 40 degrees of flaps, these things want to do one thing, and that's come straight down. So that's the other reason why we want to stay a little bit high, because when we have that much flaps in, you really have to keep that nose down. By the way, merch available in the link below in the description. Keep that nose down just to maintain airspeed, which of course is the whole point of flaps to begin with. It's to allow us to descend without gaining a lot of airspeed. All right, so our short field takeoff in this particular Skyhawk, we don't use any flaps for short field, so we're going to keep our flaps up. Mixture's coming in red. Lights, camera, action. We're going to go on a lineup on our runway. VX in this plane is going to be about 68. So here we are lined up, bringing our power up, making sure that everything's in the green. We got good power. Everything looks good. Release the brakes. All right, holding that center line. Airspeed's coming alive. Everything's in the green. 60's going to be our rotate. We're going to climb out at VX of 68. Traffic, All right, there's 60, downwind. rotate, Zero, two, and pitching up for 68. There's our abort point, we're continuing. Got a nice little headwind today, so plenty of climb performance. All right, holding that VX speed till we get clear of our obstacles. Keeping that right rudder in there to keep that ball centered. All right, we're clear of our obstacles. Nose can start coming down nice and slowly, nice and gently to our VY speed, about 85 or so. All right, short field landing. So this time you're gonna see, we're gonna be a little bit higher, but really we're not gonna be aiming for the numbers. So our aiming point is gonna be just before the second strike. And we're really just gonna come straight down onto our point. We're gonna have such minimal airspeed to begin with, there's not gonna be any float, really. We're just, as soon as that power comes out, we're gonna come right down. Charlie Bravo, 2.5. Fox traffic, 6 out kill Delta is number 2 on final, runway 0 2 Twin Holding 70 here on final until we're short final. Staying a little high, traffic, looking right before number two on final, landing our second two, stripe Twin because Oaks. that's where we're aiming, planning to set down right on that second stripe, bringing in full flaps here. And we're going to start slowing down to 65. All right, there's 65, coming down right to our second stripe. Right to our second stripe, we got some thermals here. Holding that 65, coming down right onto our second stripe. Put up, three Charlie Bravos on the 45. There we go, and then simulate max braking. Or, depending if your DP wants you to actually do the real thing, you do real max braking. All right, guys, so there is a difference. Aside from just hitting a smaller spot, there is a difference in the technique you use for a short field landing versus a normal landing. Nine or three tangles, clear the runway taxi. In both cases, you're expected to hit a certain spot. One just has bigger tolerances than the other, but it's about the way you're actually making the approach. and what type of energy you're carrying into the landing that separates a true short field technique from a normal technique. We carry more energy into the landing on a normal landing. We want to be at minimal energy in a short field landing with minimal float so that when we do set down, it might be a little harder. And that's why we say, you know, a short field landing doesn't need to be soft, but it just needs to be firm so that we're got all the weight on the wheels and we can 
make the brakes more effective. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please share if you find it useful, like and subscribe, and until next time, resume your own navigation. See ya.